Cool, thanks very much. Um, so my thesis looks at the idea of allowing domestic consumers, particularly in the UK, to have more than one electricity supplier. And my research basically focuses on what people think about this. So the work I'm presenting today shares some findings from some choice experiments that I did looking at the specific use cases of peer-to-peer -peer and local energy. So I'm just going to start with a bit of background and outlining the UK policy context. I will say, even though my work focuses on the UK, hopefully it's still relevant for lots of international electricity markets as well. <coughs> so currently in the UK and many other European countries, you can only have a contract with one electricity supplier at a time if you're a domestic consumer. So this has been identified as a regulatory barrier for not just peer-to-peer, -peer, but also local energy and lots of other innovative business models. So at the moment, if you want to run a peer-to-peer -peer trial in the UK, you've got a few options. So you could either use a regulatory sandbox, where you basically get permission from the regulators to break the law, but in a very time-limited and specific way. Um, or you can partner up with an existing supplier. But the challenge with these approaches is that if you're always having to partner with existing suppliers, then that's just reinforcing their market power and not really creating space for new entrants. And if you're not within the current regulatory frameworks, then that makes huge challenges if you want to scale up and become a commercially viable business model. So one solution that's been proposed is called a multiple supply model. So this would allow domestic consumers to have contracts with multiple electricity suppliers at a time. And what they could do is get some portion of their energy from a non-traditional supplier. And then their, their national, sorry. <laughs> So then their national level supplier would be meeting the rest of their demand by buying from the grid. To give a few examples, so you could get some of your electricity from a peer-to-peer -peer trading network, and then when there's enough peer-to-peer -peer electricity available, you use that. When there isn't, you have a backup supplier who's buying from the wholesale market um, and just buying from the grid like normal. You could also do the same thing with local energy. So just a quick note, when I'm talking about local energy here, I mean locally owned energy companies that are buying locally generated electricity and often with some kind of extra social purpose. I'm not going to talk about this too much in my presentation today, but another example is around specialised supply. So one of the challenges we have at the moment with time of use tariffs is that there might be some areas of your life where you want to be flexible, like maybe you're happy to charge your electric vehicle at 3 o'clock in the morning, but you don't want to have a shower at 3am or heat your house at 3am or make your dinner. So this could allow you to split out the supply for those assets where you're happy to be flexible, have a time fuse tariff that only operates on those assets, and then just have a normal supply for the rest of your energy demand. So there was a regulation change that was proposed in the UK a few years ago that would have allowed all of this to happen, but it was rejected. And part of the reason why it was rejected was there just wasn't much evidence about how people would respond to interacting with one one supplier and whether people really wanted any of this stuff. So that's what my research tries to do. So this project had two main aims. The first was to understand consumer demand for multiple supplier use cases, including peer-to-peer -peer and local energy. And the second one was to understand which aspects of interacting with multiple suppliers have an impact on people's willingness to engage. So I conducted four online studies in October last year, and each focused on a different multiple supplier use case. I had two samples, one was just electric vehicle owners, and they just looked at tariffs relating to EVs. The second one was a nationally representative sample of the UK. So this sample I divided into three and randomly assigned them to one of the three multiple supplier use cases. Um, I'm only going to talk about the peer-to-peer -peer local energy ones today, just for time reasons. So all participants were shown a description of the multiple supplier model. And in the peer-to-peer -peer study, they were told, in the future, you might be able to get some of your energy from, by buying and trading solar energy with your neighbors and friends in this peer-to-peer -peer network, and have your, your national level supplier as your backup, giving you the rest. And in the local energy study, they were told something similar, but with a local energy company instead of peer-to-peer. -peer. The method I used was adaptive choice-based conjoint. It's actually the same method that Esther touched on in her presentation earlier today. Um, so it's a form of choice analysis, but it has some quite interesting interactive elements. So in the first stage, participants are shown all of the possible options for different elements of the multiple supplier tariff. And they're basically asked to design their dream tariff, so if they can pick any aspects, which ones would they like the best. 
Then the algorithm takes that data and it generates concepts that are similar to the ideal tariff but with a few differences to force people to make some trade-offs. And um, in the next section, they get asked for each tariff, would you consider switching to this or would you rule out completely? And as they go through, the algorithm learns about their preferences and it adapts and asks some questions about the choices they're making. Finally, it goes into a choice tournament. So out of the tariffs that they said they would consider, it selects a random um, selection of them and it says, it presents participants with groups of three tariffs and says out of each tariff which one's your favourite. So then once you've got this data, you can do statistical analysis to figure out what are the elements that people are choosing based on and what are the things that are attractive or unattractive about these different models. At the end of the study, participants were shown their winning tariff, so what the software thinks is the best option for them, and asked whether they would switch to it if it was available in real life. So just to give you a sense of the types of aspects of interacting with multiple suppliers I was looking at, the first one was the billing structure, so how many bills they're getting and who the bills are coming from. Secondly, the point of contact, so who do they get in touch with when things go wrong, do they have to deal with talking to two different people. Uh, the cost in comparison to what they pay now and how much energy they're getting from either the peer-to-peer -peer platform or the local supplier versus how much energy they're getting from the grid. And finally, how long the contract they have to sign up for. So I'm just going to talk about a couple of the key findings now. The first finding was demand is really, really high. So in the local energy study, about 91% of participants said that they would switch to their winning tariff if it was available in real life. And in the peer-to-peer -peer study, this was about 78%. Um, so buy would switch, I mean, they said somewhat likely or higher. But of course there's always caveats. So in a follow-up question, they were asked whether they would still want to switch to this if it was recommended by some different organisations or people. And these recommendations always have quite negative effects. And what was particularly interesting was when it was recommended by either the local council or either the peer-to-peer -peer platform or local supplier, people were much less likely to engage. So I think there's something kind of interesting in there about if people think there's a vested interest in trying to get them to switch, then maybe they're less likely to want to engage with these new models. Um, I'm just going to talk very briefly about some of the choice analysis results now. So the contract length was always the most important thing, and long contracts were consistently really unpopular. As soon as there was a five-year contract in there, people were not interested. <laughs> Um, and what was quite an interesting difference between the two studies was that in the local energy study, people generally wanted to get as much energy as possible from the local supplier, and it was something that was quite important to them. Whereas in the peer to peer study, it was less important, and the most popular level was 50%. Um, cost was more important in the peer to peer study than it was in local energy, and in both studies, having two bills was something that was quite unpopular. But people didn't really care about the point of contract, uh, the point of contact. So that was some, that was the last place in every single study. Um, so at the end of the study, participants were given a chance to express some of their thoughts in a free text box. I'll talk about these results, but they do have a bit of a health warning. <laughs> so um, 126 people decided to leave a comment in the peer-to-peer -peer study, and 104 in the local energy study. The problem was, it's an optional question, so it's only really the most engaged people that chose to write something, so we can't consider this to be representative. But just to share a few of the themes that came out. There were a few concerns about the complexity and also the practicality of multiple suppliers, so some people weren't really sure how this would work in real life. Both of the models were seen as supporting the growth of renewable energy, and lots of people picked up on solar as being a positive thing that might come out of this, so increased solar adoption. People really like the idea of empowering local communities and empowering people rather than big energy companies. And I think that's a trend that will probably continue as prices continue to rise. Um, and this final point I thought was quite interesting. So reliability was mentioned as a positive thing in the local energy study. So people thought it would be more reliable to have a local supplier and then have their secondary backup supplier as the grid. Whereas in the peer-to-peer -peer study, people actually expressed concerns about the reliability of the peer-to-peer -peer network and also some issues around trust. Um, so I have one quote here from a participant that I think sums it up quite nicely. <laughs> so one person wrote, the only problem I have with peer-to-peer -peer is that I hate some of my neighbours. 
Um, so I think this quote really nicely illustrates how we can get the technologies right, we can get the policies right, but there's always going to be these social factors that influence the decisions people make and whether they want to engage with these models. So I'm just going to end with a brief summary and some final reflections. Um, so demand is really high and it seems like multiple suppliers would be quite an acceptable way of supporting the growth of local energy and peer-to-peer. -peer. But the way we design these tariffs really matters. So long contracts were very unpopular. And I think what this means is if we're designing peer-to-peer -peer networks or local energy systems, we want people to stay in them. We need to think about how we might incentivize people to continue engaging without having to lock them into long contracts that might put them off getting involved in the first place. Um, finally, participants were really positive about environmental and local aspects of these models. So maybe these are framings that we can use to try and encourage people to get involved. And I think that's supported by quite a lot of previous research as well. But with peer-to-peer -peer in particular, I think maybe some work needs to be done to show people that it's something they can rely on and show them that it's something that actually supports a stable grid rather than being something, this sort of new, weird technology that they can't trust. So my final piece of work, which will be the last book of my PhD, is going to look at how demographics and also attitudes influence people's likelihood of engaging with multiple supply models. Um, so that's everything. I've got a QR code if anyone wants to download my paper. <laughs> Sorry, a cheeky little plug there. Um, but thanks very much, and I'm happy to take any questions.